cookie and kids. If you follow us on YouTube, you know that I'm trying very hard to teach our youth how to eat more natural way. And as part of this teaching, today I will be showing you how to make a homemade jam without using any preservatives. We're gonna make it using just fruit, sugar, and lemon juice. Growing, preparing, and preserving food were the ways for so many centuries. So it would be really nice if we could bring some of those old world skills into today's kitchens. So I'm doing my share. And uh, if you find out that this recipe is easy to make, and if you approve, I would greatly appreciate if you would share it with your family and friends, so they too can learn how to preserve food in a more natural way. So first thing is first, let's go and pick some fresh figs. Picking some of these black figs and some white figs. Figs are so ripe, the bees can resist them. Once the fig gets really ripe, it will open up as you see in the bottom and it would release its sugars. And that's what bees are here for. I think I will have to eat this one. This is just perfect. You see the juices on the bottom? That means it's really ripe and good. And this is a white fig. If you're picking your own figs like we just did, the best time to pick them would be early morning. So we'll start by washing figs. And my mom is helping me get it done washed figs in half. I'm washing my mother's hands of work. These hands have done so much work in the fields and in the kitchen and are priceless tools. Things that she can make with these hands are unlike any other in the world. Add sugar. And then we're going to turn the stove on. I'm cooking a really large batch, but if you are trying to make a jam for the first time, I would suggest that you start with a small batch. Uh, with the batch as big as mine, I will be cooking jam for a while today. And um, if you're a beginner, I don't want you to stuck in a kitchen making jam for hours as I will be today. So start with a small batch, approximately with about seven pounds of figs. To begin cooking process, I suggest you set medium-high fire until GM gets a chance to heat up and boil all the way through. The size of the batch, your figs will start to cook within a 10 minutes to 40 minutes. Since we have a large batch here, it took a good 40 minutes for pot to heat up thoroughly. Now the jam is cooking, just stir it occasionally to prevent burning on the bottom. A length of cooking will very much depend on the amount of figs you have and the fire intensity. If you are starting with only seven pounds of fig, you could be done in about an hour and a half with your jam. But we are started with a lot of figs and um, I kept a lot of fire on medium, so my jam, it's taking about three hours to cook, and I'm not quite done yet. Making jam is simple and easy, but it could also be quite dangerous, especially if you have a, a pot of this size. Once jam starts thickening, you will notice, especially if you keep a fire on medium high, you're gonna notice a lot of bubbling from the bottom. And as the jam gets thicker, these bubbles become a little bit more dangerous because um, you're gonna have a little tiny explosions coming from the bottom of the pot, uh, which is a hot air pushing through the jam, which sometimes you can get sprayed. So you have to be very careful and you will need to steer to release that pressure from the bottom. Otherwise, you can get a little bit burned and I don't want you to go through, um, through pains or burns while making jam. So, if you do have a fire on higher, medium to medium high, you would need to steer around and mix the jam to prevent burning and to prevent those little, bit, bu little bubbles coming up. And not just that they burn, but they also spray your kitchen all over. And you don't want to do a cleanup after you've been cooking jam for the most of your day, right? The more you steer, the faster the liquid will evaporate from the jam which means your jam will cook quicker. 
So far, we have lost about a third of the liquid from where, when we started. If you remember this morning, we were all the way up here and uh, um, we can call it done. But if you like to have your jam even thicker, you can continue to cook it. I think I have had enough and uh, this thickness is good enough. It will be even thicker as it cools. So I'm gonna move on onto jars now and finish up our little project today. Done. I'm gonna place clean jars of lids in the oven and I'm gonna allow them to warm up to maybe 125, 130 degrees. This way it's gonna, it's gonna help you know, to sanitize the jars and also it will adjust the temperature of the glass to the hot jam that's coming in. And this way you can prevent the break or breakage of the glass. And as a finishing touch, you're gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice. If you're wondering why lemons, well, it's quite simple. Figs are really sweet fruit. And they have a, a, a lot of sugar, a lot of flavor, but one thing they do lack is acid. By adding a little bit of lemon, you will enhance the flavor of your jam and also further help preserve it. Ah, oh, these lemons smell so good. They're fresh from the garden. They're still full of sunshine and they're still quite warm. I love their fragrance, love it. Mm. And when you work like this, you can squeeze a little lemon, juice, get some of that lemon oil, and use it as an oil on your skin. <sighs> it <smells> so good. <laughs> All right, back to work. All right, for this, um, for this size uh, batch, for this large batch, I'm gonna use about what do we got two four five four six eight lemons so i'm going to use about eight lemons but you can add a little bit more or less depending on your taste and here goes the last of lemon juice and i can tell you how good this kitchen smells right now Lemon makes everything better. I say we're ready to pour. So let's go grab a jar. Nice and hot, so be careful. My hands can handle heat really well. Just to make it safe, bring a jar using a kitchen towel. And I have showed you in a previous video, a apricot jam video, to use a dish like this because it's gonna um, prevent you from getting burned. It's gonna protect your hands and any drippings or anything that you miss that doesn't go in a jar will drip and fall in a dish. And this way you're safer and and your jam will get poured quicker. Alright, there we go. First one to do this right we will need to reduce the fire on very low and I will occasionally even turn it off. It's definitely will go easy with the um, standard jars. You see the opening is so much larger. This is so much easier. But the other jars that you saw me using are recycled jars. And I do that a lot. I, lo I use a lot of uh, recycled jars for my spaghetti sauce. And that's it. <laughs> I can't feel my hand. It really hurts. Stack them together. And now we're going to cover them. Lock them in. Right. Very good. And a uh, um, good idea is to use a blankie, a warm blanket. Let's just see what she does. Just tuck them nicely in and let them sit like this. And, up and like now that we're done, I hope you will agree that this was quite simple. Jam is nicely done and it's good for years to come. Using sugar, lemon, and heat, it's preserved and it's good in jars for probably three or four years. The only thing is, once you open it, uh, store it in a fridge as it will spoil. But if you store it in a fridge, it will last for another couple or three weeks. This was an easy recipe, it was fun, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you share it with your friends. So I gotta go clean up. So until next cooking adventure, you have my love and blessings. Bye!